it, officer. It was this way. I was walking along, minding my business. Love came and hit me in the eye. Purple stripe and pretty green and polka dotted sky. Bachelor does his laundry.
naturally go together, but after 35, your system slows down. Well, why don't you help yourself keep that feeling of well-being? Ask your druggist for Seratan today. You know the only reason I'm out here? This is the only chance that I get out here by myself. You notice that Mr. Gleason is making a change? And I, I've got strict orders to tell no jokes. Just introduce the next act. Now, you know what burns me up about Gleason? He's got his own television show. Telling me what to do, pushing me around. You won't believe this. Up until seven months ago, Gleason was a clothing salesman. That's the truth, right down here on 14th Street. And I know the man that he used to work for, and he said Gleason was the best salesman he ever had in the store. Now, you won't believe this. Come here. A woman came in to buy her husband a suit of clothes. This poor woman's husband had just died, and she wanted to bury him in this suit. Gleason talked her into buying an extra pair of pants. <laughs> Since he's got the show, what a head backstage, nobody will talk to him. The stage head, everybody's mad at him. He keeps going around talking all the time about all the pictures he's been in. He says, I was in this picture, that picture. I've been in a few pictures. I never saw Gleason in a picture. Well, he swears up and down that he was in a picture that was made easily nine years ago with Charles Lawton, the hunchback of Notre Dame. Remember? Gleason didn't think anybody'd ever catch the picture. I caught it in one of those neighborhood theaters where they have revivals. I sat through the thing three times looking for him. And if he's in it, he's the guy they stuffed up Lawton's back. Did you know that no act that's on this show unless Gleason approves? You won't believe this. I was playing in Pittsburgh last week, so was Miss Vivian Blaine, and two or three of these acts. Gleason came on, and we all came back on the train. There was nine of us, and a new trombone player in Sammy Spears' band. Now get a load of this. After the years, I've been in this business. Coming from Pittsburgh, Everybody had a compartment or a drawing room but me. I had to sleep in an upper berth with a trombone player. <laughs> Have you ever slept with a trombone player? <laughs> That's him. <laughs> He was having the darndest dreams. He kept dreaming that he was riding a bicycle. I bet you never heard of that one. He must have thought he had the bicycle up in the berth with him because he kept pedaling all night. <laughs> the only time I got any sleep on the whole trip was on this side of Altoona, coming down the mountain. He was coasting. <laughs> So mad by this time, I go and I wake up Gleason. He had a drawing room. And I said, either I get a compartment the rest of the way to New York, or you can take my six months notice. <laughs> but I got the compartment. But I got out of it in Harrisburg, and I never went back in it, and I'll tell you why. I was sick and tired of the conductor locking me in at every station. <laughs> about you, Jack. Yes, I heard it. How are you? I have a little speaker in my dressing room. I heard the nice things you said about me. You did, huh? And just as I was coming out here to give you a number that you could have...